Welcome back, trainers. So with PvP right around the corner, I thought I'd go over a few more Pokemon that have good coverage moves or just common Pokemon that are used so you can have a better understanding as to which ones you should probably pick because I know there's a lot of people out there who are completely ready at the same time. There's others who are just clueless and have no idea what they should do. Also, we have a new shiny, so let's go ahead and discuss this. So this is happening in the Totari Prefecture of Japan. They're partnering up with Niantic, as you can see here, and they're releasing the shiny Sanchiru. Now, if you're wondering, what about shiny Alolan Sanchiru? Is that going to be shiny? I, I don't know. I don't think so. Just this one and the Sand Slash, obviously, their evolution form. So it's not going to be worldwide quite yet. But as we've seen with the pincer, what happened with that? We saw the event over there. They had a whole bunch of pincers shiny, and then it was released worldwide in an abundance. It was crazy, right? We got a bunch of those. So just be patient, and you should probably be seeing this in the near future coming worldwide for everybody else. So there you have it. Shiny Sandshrew looks pretty good, if I must say so myself. Now, let's go ahead and check out some of these possible counter Pokemon that you may want to consider or just give you ideas as to what other people might be using when you go into PvP very soon. Alrighty, so we are over here on the Go Hub. Let's go ahead and check out the first Pokemon that I have here. That's going to be Donphin. Now, if you're thinking, what? Why? Well, you're going to see here in just a moment. First of all, it's one typing. It's pretty defensive and it has a decent attack. Not only that, its move pool is great. Very diverse, which we will take a look at. So here are the stats. Now remember, we're going to have these different leagues. The 1500 CP mark, and then the 2500, and then the unlimited. Now you can get this down to a 1500 if you are, you know, find a very low CP Fanfi, or possibly a low CP Donfin, and just power it up however you have to do it. And getting it into the 2500 range, no problem whatsoever. All right, and then the obvious unlimited. So as you can see, it stats attack 214, defense 185. I mean, it's, you know, okay. Stamina 207. So it's fairly rounded, but that's not what you have to worry about. What you need to see is the moves. So I'm going to show you what it's weak against really quick. Weak to grass, ice, and water types, resisting electric, poison, and rock. Now, here we go. My favorite part for this Pokemon. I'm just going to go straight down to the moves here. So we have tackle and counter. Pretty sure you're going to want to go with counter, okay? So you have that fighting coverage there for your quick move. Nice. Very good. Then you're going to have Earthquake, Heavy Slam, and Play Rough for its charge moves. What a beautiful setup for PvP. Because you're going to have these Metagross. You're going to have these Dragons, right? Maybe even Fairy types. And what does Donphin have here? The good old Earthquake and Play Rough. Now, before we continue on, you have to know something here for PvP. As we've been shown here in this video, if you are paying attention, you have Solar Beam that is charging up fairly slow because we know that is a one charge bar move. It's going to require more energy for that bigger bar. Then you have Flamethrower to the right, which is a two charge bar move, a much smaller uh, energy bar, which is going to fill up a lot quicker, equaling more attacks getting off onto that opponent. Do you see how it's going to work out here? So if you think about a three charge bar move, you might be able to break all their shields immediately with your beginning Pokemon. So back to Donphin's moves here. Now, if you're wondering, what do you mean break all their shields with a three charge bar move Pokemon? Well, if you're continuously hitting them with charge moves, they might get nervous and just continuously use their shield. And then their, their team is completely vulnerable. You're going to be able to just smash right through them with your charge moves, depending on how you play your strategy. So I wanted to show you that because then you have Heavy Slam and Play Rough. Both of those are a two charge bar move. You're going to be continuously able to get them off and have pretty good coverage there. Although you may want to go with Earthquake and play rough. Therefore, you're going to be able to destroy those Metagross and also Tyranitars. But then you have play rough, which can also destroy Tyranitars and Dragon types as well as fighting. So do you just see how good Dolphin just got there? <laughs> exactly. So Dolphin is going to be a fantastic Pokemon to consider. Just going to have to look out for a few typings, but other than that, if you play your cards right, it should be able to do a fantastic job for you and your team. You might think I'm crazy, but let's try to find some usability for this big fella here. Agron, it, it can be good, okay? We're going to go over why. Now, it's going to be four times weak to two typings, which is going to just completely destroy it, but if your opponent does not have those types... Well, this Pokemon may be able to shine. So it's going to be a Steel and Rock type for attack 198. Defense 257. Do you see that? And Stamina 172. So 
yes, nobody really likes Aggron anymore thanks to raids and making people lose because everybody picks them and then you don't do enough damage and then blah, Aggron sucks. That's what everybody says now. Nope, not necessarily. Not really. Okay, so we have week two, four times a week to fighting and ground. So that is an absolute nightmare. Then it's just going to be weak to water type there. But on the flip side, if they don't have ground or fighting, and I guess you could say water, and they just stuck with all these other types, whoa, yeah, it's resisting poison, flying, normal, bug, dragon, fairy, ice, psychic, and rock. So not bad whatsoever. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at its moves and see what it has going on for it. This guy needs to shine a little bit. He's been in the dark too much. Everybody's like, nah, Agron, but I say Agron, I got your back, buddy. So quick moves, Dragon Tail and Iron Tail. So that is pretty good. Nice coverage for those dragons and or rock types or maybe Tyranitar. Smack that Tyranitar with that tail real good and chip it off. All right. And then you have Stone Edge, Thunder, and Heavy Slam for its charge moves. So at least you have a double charge bar move, so you'll be able to continuously get off some charge moves that have stab as well and then you have that stone edge which is going to be nice say for those dragon types you know because mostly every dragon is flying so that stone edge will tear right through their pretty little wings and knock them straight to the ground while they're not going to be doing super effective damage to you whatsoever unless uh you're going up against a salamance with hydro pump but yeah you don't really have to worry about too much there so yeah so agron is looking okay as you can see, I mean, it has high defense and good stamina as well. Decent move pool for coverage. So think about it. Alrighty, now let's go over a little bit more of an exciting Pokemon, and that's going to be Salamence. This thing is actually going to be pretty good for PvP, other than the fact it's going to be weak to, you know, a lot of the dragons that are going to be coming out. And also, Ice Pokemon is going to be four times weak to Ice, so you might have to look out for that. But... You're going to see its amazing coverage moveset. So it's going to be a dragon and flying type. He's going to be great for the unlimited mode for sure. Max CP 3,749 attack, 277 defense, 178 in stamina, 216. Here we have weakness to dragon, fairy, ice, four times weak to ice, and rock. So yeah, pretty readily available typings there. So you have to look out for it. But it's going to be resisting grass, ground, bug, fighting, fire, and water types. Okay, so for Salamence's quick moves, we have Fire Fang and Dragon Tail. Remember that Dragon moves are not very effective towards Steel types, so they might want to swap into a Steel type, possibly Metagross or Steelix. In which case, if you had Fire Fang, you would be doing super effective damage. But I personally would probably go with Dragon Tail to keep your uh, moves secret. You want to keep those secret until you hit them hard with that Fire Blast. So here we go with the charge moves. You have Draco Meteor, Hydro Pump, and fire blast now a pokemon with a water move and a fire move together there that's a pretty good combination that's good coverage right there now i don't know if you want to go water fire combination or dragon fire or dragon water personally i wouldn't go dragon water i don't know it's up to you because what if you get stuck with a metagross or something like that uh, if they pull out steelix i guess you're gonna have that hydro pump super effective but personally you may want to go with draco meteor and fire blast uh, you're going to be super effective to those dragon types with the Draco Meteor and then super effective to the steel types, which dragon moves are not super effective to. So you have good coverage there. If you have Hydro Pump and Fire Blast and they pull out a dragon type, you're going to do damage, but water and fire are not very effective to other dragons. So that is something to keep in mind. So Salamance's move pool is looking quite nice for a variety of different types. Righty, next up is going to be Whalerin. Now, these are not going to be your top tier suggestions, and obviously they're going to be better ones, say a Kyogre. I'm just trying to think out the box, okay? For people who are trying to have interesting battles and not just pick Groudon, Kyogre, Rayquaza, bah, Raikou, you know, things like that. It's going to be ridiculous. I hope it limits you on the number of legendaries you can go into a battle with, because it's just like, come on. Let's try here. Let's try to be unique and have fun with the game and not just go in there with... The weather beasts. Anyways, we have an ice and water type right here. Max CP, 2,726. Attack, 182. Defense, 176. And stamina at a whopping 242. So it's going to be able to take a few hits with all that HP. All right, now let's go ahead and look at its weaknesses. Unfortunately, readily available typings. Electric, fighting, grass, and rock. Resisting ice and water. Should be able to take a few hits, though and give off some pretty good damage at least 
with waterfall as its quick move and also has frost breath personally i would go with waterfall so for its charge moves we have blizzard earthquake and water pulse water pulse is a good option you're going to get stabbed two charge bar move it's going to be charging up fairly quick fast energy gain remember what we're talking about the two charge bar moves three charge bar moves are going to be gaining energy at a much faster rate than those big one charge bar moves so then you also have earthquake which is going to be a good move for coverage because people are going to want to use tyranitars and metagross guess what you have earthquake which is going to be covering your weakness electric type so pretty good pokemon here to consider for the future as well yes i had a rag on the weather trio for just a second back there so now i'll cover them really quick because I haven't really went over legendaries too much because uh, I don't know how I feel about using them in matches. So if it was a full-on battle in unlimited mode, no rules, just go, the Weather Trio would make a great combination for sure. So let's go ahead and cover them. I'm going to make this quick. As you can see the stats here, I don't really need to go over them. Uh, just the attack though is at 270. Def I mean, it's just massively strong. Um, then we have weak two, grass, ice, and water, resisting electric poison and rock. Let's go ahead and take a look at the moves here because this is crazy, right? Yeah, anything that has the a move that is super effective to its weakness, <laughs> it's going to be good. Quick moves, Mud Shot and Dragon Tail. Charge moves, Solar Beam, Earthquake, and Fire Blast. <laughs> so good. Now, you're definitely going to want to go with a Solar Beam. Now, if you went up against a Dragon type, now this is where you want Dragon Tail. Everybody's like, what's with these moves? These are so weird. They make no sense. Well, they make plenty sense now. So if you had a dragon type switch into battle, and you're thinking to yourself, great, I have Solar Beam and Earthquake, but it's okay. You have Dragon Tail. That's doing super effective damage. At least you have that stab move, and it's giving off a good amount of damage to the opponent, right? And if you had to use Solar Beam, right? It's not going to not do any damage just because it's flying type, but you probably don't want to do Earthquake. I don't know. Up to you. Consider that. There is going to be no weather, so also remember that as well. So don't think, oh, I'm going to get weather boost from my solar beam and just, just dominate. Not going to happen. No weather boosts. You are going to be weak to grass and ice types. So having fire blast is going to be a probably a good option as well. So you don't have to worry too much about the metagross because fire blast is super effective there if you're losing your earthquake. Yes, you're going to be getting staff from earthquake, but solar beam and fire blast is a great coverage move for sure. Let's go ahead and look at Kyogre here. There is its stats. This is going to be weak to electric grass, resisting fire, ice, steel, and water types. Now let's go over its moves because this thing <laughs> does have a good move set as well, okay? So quick move. Only one thing, waterfall, which is going to be working great for it anyways. Massive damage plus stab. Then you have for its charge moves, blizzard, thunder, and hydro pump. Now, what do you want on Kyogre? Well, I think you're going to want to go with hydro pump and blizzard for sure. Okay, you, yes, if they pull out another water type and you have thunder, you're going to be super effective to them. But let's think about even more coverage here. You have blizzard for dragons, hydro pump for ground and rock types and even fire, right? Uh, so, I mean, it's looking great on that end. If you want to throw in thunder to mix things up, you know, feel free. But personally, if I had to recommend it to you, you want to go with blizzard and hydro pump for this guy here. Simple as that. You have Rayquaza. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Now, this is going to be a glass cannon, but it's going to be putting off a lot of damage. It's going to be a dragon and flying type. We'll go over its stats. Max CP, 3,834. Attack, 284. My goodness. Defense, 170. And stamina, 113. All right, so it is going to be weak to a dragon fairy. Four times weak to ice and rock types. Resisting grass, ground, bug, fighting, fire, and water types. All right, let's go ahead and take a look here. For its quick moves, we have Air Slash and Dragon Tail. For its charge moves, we have Outrage, Aerial Ace, and Ancient Power. Now, what do you want on your Rayquaza if you're going into a PvP match? I think you're going to want to go with Dragon Tail, okay, for your quick move. And then for your charge moves, you're wanting Outrage for sure as well. Now, here's the other part. What do you want, Aerial Ace or Ancient Power? Well, what is Rayquaza weak against? What is he really weak against? Ice types. So you're going to probably want to go with Ancient Power. That's going to give you a bit of coverage against your weakness there. Maybe you have a shield you want to save your Rayquaza. You shield up, and then your Ancient Power is ready. Think about it. Ancient Power is a three-charge bar move. It's going to be continuously happening. So you'll be able to hit those Ice types for possibly super effective damage, or whatever type is weak to the rocks out there currently, and you'll be looking somewhat good. At least you're going to be able to put on massive damage before they take your Rayquaza out. 
so it's something to consider. At least he has some coverage against what he's weak against, so he's looking pretty okay here. I'm just going to cover this because I keep getting the requests out of this world. Mew, how good is it going to be in PvP? Well, first, let me say this. We might not even be able to use our mythicals. Might not. PvP might come out in the next day and a half, two days, and we're going to be able to use Mew. Just saying, we can't trade them, and yeah, I don't know. <laughs> can't even transfer them, so who knows if we can even battle with them. But yes, is Mew going to be good? It, yeah, it should be. Its move pool is massively crazy, and you can put on all kinds of different combinations on this little guy here. So, decent stats. You know, he's just a rounded, tanky little thing here. Let's go ahead and see its weaknesses and resistances. Weak to bug, dark, and ghost, resisting, fighting, and psychic. All right, now... <laughs> Here we go, guys. It's going to load for a minute. Yeah, it's definitely going to load. Okay, because this thing has the most moves in Pokemon Go. Now, what you're seeing here are just the quick moves. Oh, yeah. Now, here are the charge moves. I'm not going to read them all off. You can just go ahead and see here. But personally, what would I want to go with? You know, there's so many moves. If I had to narrow it down, simply, well put. If I can find where I'm at because there's so many moves, I'm lost. I'm lost in the sea of moves, guys. Okay, I found my way back. Now, personally, what do you want to go with? Um, I'm going to go with Quick Move Poison Jab. Actually going to probably switch that up because not everybody knows. But if I had to recommend something to the public, which somebody else wouldn't know what you're using, Poison Jab is a generally good move. I say maybe that or Dragon Tail, okay? Because Dragon is hitting pretty much everything for neutral damage except for Fairy and Steel types, right? So you might want to go with those two. Now for the charge move, you might want Dazzling Gleam, all right? And then Overheat, or there was another one, Flame Wheel, or not Flame Wheel, Flame Charge, sorry. Flame Charge, going to be continuously happening, and you're going to be able to cover those darn Steel types like Metagross, right? So that's what I think about it. Bulldoze is good too, you know, you can do super effective damage to them. Anything that's going to be hitting Steel types, you want something that's going to be hitting Steel with Mew okay and also possibly dragons so an ice move i mean that's great but then again you're going to have dazzling gleam which will hit dragons and fighting type pokemon for super effective damage so you might want to go with that as well so there's mew guys now i would love to go over the current ones that i'm working on let me go ahead and show you my stardust i went out grinding to try to bring it back up because i use so much of it and yeah uh if i reveal everything that i'm doing here then that's no good. I'm not going to be able to hit anybody with a surprise. Now, I know a lot of you know what I'm working on and some of the things I have going, but I've actually powered up a few things here, and I'm going to scroll down and see if you can notice if you watch me all the time. Another thing to uh, take note about is also Empoleon. I mean, that might be a good option too. It's kind of like if you were going up against somebody, they're like, all right, no legendaries, kind of like the way I'm thinking. Uh, this one's almost like a replacement for Kyogre. You have Waterfall, Blizzard, and then you can also do Hydro Pump. It doesn't learn Thunder, but still, you have Water and Blizzard coverage, so that's pretty good hitting hard. Personally, if you're going to pick a starter Pokemon, I would go with this one because it can learn Overheat and Solar Beam. So that is going to be great coverage, just like you've seen in that trailer, right? They put the perfect example up. And if we wanted to look at another Fire Pokemon that can do that kind of Solar Beam deal... Uh, Typhlosion is another Pokemon that can do that. And then you also have, uh, where is it? Uh, let me find, um, it's my Ninetales. Uh, it's right here. So you have Fire Spin, and it already has Solar Beam. And then another good one is obviously going to be uh, Overheat. That's what you're going to want. So pretty hard-hitting moves there. Uh, if you have Fire and Grass, there's not too much that can, you know, run and hide from that. You have your Dragons, but... Yeah, it's going to be a pretty good combination for sure. I was looking into the Alolan Ninetales, thinking about if I wanted to use it or not. It could be good in certain situations, but it is going to be very weak to Steel-type. Four times, as a matter of fact. Uh, so those Metagross, man, they're going to be threatening a lot of things. That's why you're going to need those Ground and Fire moves to make sure you take them out. And have some sort of coverage for them, because they're going to be kind of wally. Uh, but then again, we'll see how all this plays out. Anyways, trainers, I'd like to say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it wasn't too long. And I'll be catching you all next time. Take care.